Hello guys, today we'll have a code review of an open source project. It's actually a part two of the review that I've done previously a few days ago about Link Ace open source project. And in that video, we reviewed the installer process. And in this video, we will take a look at all the other code, what I've noticed, any design patterns, anything that I find here. And repository is open source and free on GitHub. And I will link that in the description below. And one by one, let's go through the code. First thing will be about eloquent scopes. If I land on dashboard here, I land on dashboard controller and method index. And in the index, there are a lot of things fetched from the database. So links, tags, link lists, and other accounts. And here we see an interesting thing called by user. What is by user? It's a method inside of the model of link and it is a scope. So if we look for scope by user, here it is we we'll just add query where of user ID. It's quite convenient to query the user whenever you need, but there are two things I would improve here. First, you see by user is repeated all over the place and auth user ID can be done shorter. So instead of auth user ID, there is a shorter way auth ID, but ID as a method. So everywhere here, I would do auth ID. And then in that by user scope, I would actually do a default behavior. So user ID may be null by default. And then if is null user ID, then user ID equals auth ID. Actually one more condition. So if the user ID is null and auth check, then we have user ID set by default. Okay, my PHP storm doesn't like my null in uppercase, so I will change that one. And also I need to update the PHP doc comment to int null. So this way we manage the scope and then everywhere we call that link by user, we don't need the parameter here anymore. Because if we search for all the project link by user, there are quite a few places, recent links, broken links in like seven or eight places. So everywhere here, we may replace auth user ID with just no parameter and by user will mean actual logged in user. So I would do that transformation for all the scopes by user in all of the models. Next thing I wanna to touch is flash notifications. So for example, if I add some blog link and I click add link, this message appears link added successfully or in case of any validation errors it would come with validation errors and in this project author kevin did two things so for general validation errors in app blade there in the main app blade there is a partial alerts include and here you see a typical bootstrap based if there are any errors on the validation it will list them all but also there is include flash message and what is that if you take a look at Composer JSON, this is an example of a package which is really old but stood the test of time and still is being used. It is LaraCast's Flash. If we go to the GitHub of that package, it's by Jeffrey Way and it was created seven years ago but still maintained. Nine months ago it was updated to support Laravel 8. So all you need to do to have that Flash messages anywhere in your controller like in link controller you flash any message you want with level of success and also you may add more messages so flash link added successfully and also there's a logic to search for duplicate links and if there is something duplicated you add more flash messages with warning so in one page after the redirect you can have success message and also a few warnings if you wish Next thing I want to discuss is repository pattern. So for some of the models, there are repositories created. And if we take a look at app repositories, there are five classes and let's take a look at one of them. In the link controller of the same link kind of a CRUD, there is a link repository being used. So link repository create here, then down below there is link repository update and in destroy there is link repository delete. 
So what's inside? Let's go to that repository. And generally, in theory, repository is a layer, kind of a middleware between the controller and the database layer. So if there is something to be executed before the record is created or before it is updated, if there is some more logic included, you may create a repository class. It could be a service class. In the very strict theoretical definition of repository, it should be a replaceable repository. So you could replace that with binding to some other class. So in this case, it's not the strict thing of repository because it just replaces the create method of eloquent with some more logic. And look what we have here. Some filling the data with getting the information from the URL. If there is a link with that URL and only then inside of that method, we have link create. Also processing some taxonomies, also initiating some backup and returning the link. So in this case, I wouldn't call it strictly the repository, but it's kind of like a link service. Maybe it would be a better name. Update method is a bit shorter and then delete method. And we will stop on that in a minute. It's just deleting the link, but soft deleting that. If we click here, there's soft deletes enabled and there is a concept of trash and there is a separate trash repository. So let's take a look at that next. Let's try to delete that link and it's deleted successfully. But also there is a link on the top right to go to trash. So there's one trash for all the models of links, lists, tags, and nodes, and you can clear the trash for each of them. So let's go to trash controller. There is an app trash controller, and in the index, we get only trashed, again, by user. Again, I would replace that as I said in the very beginning. So we go to that view, and then if we want to delete something, delete the trash, so clear the trash. There is a trash repository that accepts the model to be deleted. And let's go to that trash repository. There is a static function delete. And then you have switch. If it's a link, we delete the link. We get only trashed, again, by user, because it's kind of like a multi-tenancy. You can access only your links of your user. And then switch case, you force delete one of those set of records with for each force delete. So it's another interesting concept of general repository. There is also a restore method, which does really similar thing with switch case. And then at the bottom restores the entry, one entry. So for example, I can probably click here and it would be restored. Yep, so the trash is cleared. And if I go to all links or on the dashboard, I have that link back restored. Another thing I want to is a proof that you are free to structure your folders and subfolders however you want. So author Kevin structured the controllers into a separate subfolder of models. There are four main entities or concepts in this project. It's link, list, node, and tag. And each of them has their own controller into a models subfolder. And also there is a model subfolder in the resources. So resources views models and each of that is a subfolder with index and some partials and edit blade and all of that stuff. So it's kind of misleading what is a model because there's also, of course, app models, which includes all of those four. But generally you can structure your namespaces and controllers however you want. So for example, there's a general app subfolder in the controller and you've seen the trash controller already. There's also import and search and much more, but models are kind of separately lying in their own folder. Haven't seen that done anywhere previously, so that's why I wanted to mention in this video as a proof that you are free to structure your subfolders and folders however you want. It's not just someone else's best practice that you should follow. The next thing that I wanted to show you is how this author uses helpers. So global helper functions of Laravel, for example, get pagination limit. What is that function and where does it come from? If we click that from the controller, we land in a file called app helper functions PHP and it's auto loaded in composer JSON. There is a special auto load section app helper functions. And in that functions PHP, you can do whatever you want. It's not attached to any class or any structure. It's just the functions. So get pagination limit gets the pagination from the config. If there is a guest URL, then it takes the system settings. Otherwise, it takes user settings. And system settings is another helper of the same file function. But in this case, it interacts with Laravel more. So it takes that from the cache. 
otherwise it takes that from setting model. So there is a separate eloquent model of settings with settings database table with user ID field, which may be nullable. So if it's user ID, then it's user setting. If user ID is null, then it's a global system setting. But generally, this is the way how to use global helper with functions PHP, or you may call it helper PHP, and then auto load that in the composer JSON. Another package that I wanted to show you is called revisionable. So to show the history of any model, in this case, it's a link, and there is a package called revisionable, this one, VentureCraft revisionable. And what it does, it's saving the changes of any model in this database table revisions. And then you can show them pretty easily. If you add revisionable trait to your model, that's basically all you need to do for saving the revisions. And then in the link controller show, for example, you can take the history from link revision history. And then in the show blade, you just have history as array and then show that however we want. Here, Kevin used some blade components for icons and for links and toggling collapse and show hide the more entries because there may be like hundreds of entries or something like that. But generally you are working with history as a collection of eloquent, which contains all the changes of that particular record of that particular model. Another small thing I've noticed in the link controller in some custom methods like update check toggle or mark working is how to make it shorter to avoid save on eloquent model if you use fillables. So instead of having check disabled assigned and then clicking saved, you can do link update and then you have array of check disabled equals that value and then you close that array and you don't need to click save at all. So that is one line instead of two lines and similar here, link update status equals status OK, close the array, close the function, delete the save. So one line instead of two, but for that to work in the link model, you need to have those as fillables, fillable array. And interestingly, in the link repository, in the other function of update, the author uses the update function of array of data instead of assigning the variables. So I just wanted to mention that if any of you uses the assigning the properties and then clicking save, it may be done shorter with update of eloquent. So that's all the interesting parts that I wanted to review in this video about link case. The repository is public on GitHub. And maybe if you notice something else that I should discuss some pattern or some function that I didn't mention, then shoot in the comments below and maybe I will shoot part three about link case or specific function topic video about some specific topic that is used in this repository. So be active in the comments. And also I have more code reviews upcoming because on Twitter I asked you for ideas what to review and I have at least five repositories to review. So subscribe to the channel to get notified of new reviews of both junior code and more professional coders like Kevin in this case. And let's all learn from practical examples, from practical real applications, I believe it's the best way to learn. If you believe that too, and if you want to support my mission of daily videos on YouTube, you can check out one of the three products that you can see now on the screen. One of my teachable courses, our quick admin panel generator, or set of Livewire components at Livewire Kit, and see you guys in other videos.